Hey everyone, Sergey Proknevsky here from ukremedia.com and today I am recreating a Toon Style Animation Blender tutorial that I did back in 2016 because let's face it, Blender went through some changes and it's almost impossible to get the same results in Blender 2.8. So a lot of you have been asking me to recreate it and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And by the way, that tutorial was based on another Cinema 4D tutorial that was created by our friends from videosmile.ru. If you want to check out that Cinema 4D tutorial, you should definitely hit the link at the bottom of this video. Check it out. It's super awesome. And you should definitely go to ukremedia.com slash blender if you want to learn how to create a motion graphic sports bumper like this one. All right, so we are in Blender, and this is what Blender looks like when you first fire it up. You have like a cube, you have a camera, and a light. However, we do not need this cube, so I'm gonna select this, press X to get rid of it, press delete. And next, we do need to bring in a circle. Now, to bring in objects in Blender, you can do it a number of different ways. You can go to add and then, you know, go to mesh, circle, that's one way. But the one that I like using the most is just a simple shortcut because you can do it anywhere on the screen. You don't have to travel all the way over here. So you can just go over here and press shift A and then you can go to mesh, circle, and there you have it. And as soon as you click on circle, you want to make sure that you don't click anywhere else because once you click on circle, you'll see the circle highlighted like this. It is also in what I call active mode. And because it is in this active mode, you can still edit this shape. You can go over here, you'll see this window right here, add curve. You can click on it, you can see more options. And you can go to vertices and you can increase it to 62. You can play with the radius if you want, but I'm gonna keep it at one. So once you're done, once you click away, as you can see, the window goes away and you don't really have those options anymore. So now we have vertices in here. We're gonna go to top view, either by pressing seven on an umpad or you can go to view and then viewpoint and then right here top. All right, so we have this circle. We're gonna go into edit mode. We're gonna go deep inside of it. Right now we are in object mode. So if you wanna go into edit mode, you can either click here and go to edit mode or you can press tab on your key. As you can see, we are in edit mode. Now, even in edit mode, we have three options. We have vertices, edges, and then faces. We're gonna stay in vertices for right now. I'm gonna press A and select all of them. As you can see, there they are. Now, we do have a little dilemma. As you can see, we have vertice right here and right there on the line. I don't want for that to do that. So I want for it to be like this, right? Like for it to go in between those two points. And to be precise, I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna do some math, just basic math. I'm gonna press R for rotation and then click away right away. As you can see, the window pops up here and in here, I'm going to replace it for 360 degrees divided by 62 vertices. And when you press enter, you can see it moved it, but it moved it where it used to be. But now what I would need to do, I'm gonna take this and divide it by two. And then it's gonna put it through the middle like this. Too much math, but you know, I'm OCD and it helps me. All right, so now that we have it in a proper position, Next, I'm gonna go into edges here. You can either click on it like this or you can press two on your keyboard. And now we have edges, we can select any of them. I'm gonna select this edge and shift select that one. So I have two of them selected and I'm gonna continue holding down shift. I'm gonna select this one and also that one. So all together I have four edges selected and then I'm going to press X to get rid of it. So I'm gonna say delete edges. And now we have two different shapes, right? We have if we're, gonna, we're gonna go back to vertices. I'm gonna press A to select all of them so you can see better. So we have a gap in here and a gap in here. And the reason why I did this because I'm going to bridge them together in a way to where this vertice is gonna connect to that one, that one is gonna connect to that one, and so on. And it's gonna give us nice subdivision for bending. So to do that, we're going to make sure that you highlight or select all of your points by pressing A on your keyboard. And then you want to go to Edge and click on this bridge edge loops. So when you click on it, you can see it does exactly what we want. So that looks nice. Next, I'm gonna go to edge mode, click on this edge. I'm gonna select this edge right here and I'm going to create like a handle for it. So I'm gonna select this, press E for extrusion. Uh, I like using keyboard shortcuts, just E so much quicker. And next, right now it's extruding based on our view, but you wanna kinda lock it in on certain axis. So I'm gonna say Y. Press Y on your keyboard like this. And right now it's kind of moving only on Y. And I'm gonna move it right about here. So that's good. But once you have this extruded, you do wanna kind of adjust the shape. If you know anything about ping pong, you know these handles have a little angle right here. So I'm gonna select this edge, 
press down S on my keyboard to scale. And we're going to scale slightly like this. Not too much, but enough to where it looks like a ping pong paddle. Next, what we need to do, we need to create some subdivisions. And to do that, I'm going to press Control R. And as you can see, we can add some subdivisions in here. I'm going to add about, let's do 10 like this. And once you click away, you can see you can keep adjusting it. You can create more subdivisions if you want, but I'm going to keep it at 10. All right, so we kind of have the basic shape of our paddle. Next, what we need to do, we need to extrude this thing to where we have some thickness. And to do that, we're going to go to face mode. You can either click on it here or press 3 on your keyboard. And I'm going to press A to select all of my faces. And then I'm going to press E to extrude. Or you can use this right here. You can click on it, press on this plus, and kind of extrude like this. After you are, you are done extruding, you'll see this window pop up. And you can adjust this. I'm going to say negative 0.15. That looks good. Okay. So we have like a basic shape in here. And by the way, I do like to label things. So once you've created this, you might want to label this in here. Double click. We're going to call it paddle. Now, right away, you notice that our edge right here is pretty rigid. It's not, not very smooth. And for what we're doing, honestly, you don't even have to correct that because we're going to use flat colors anyway. We're not going to have any like diffuse or any like shading. So, but just to show you how to fix it, just right click here and go to shade smooth, or you can just select this object and you can go to object. And in here, you'll see shade smooth right there. It's the same thing. Now, obviously, as you can see, we're having a little issue here because our edges are smooth as well. So it's not very sharp. Now, to fix it, you can do two different ways. You can either go to modifiers while you have this selected, and you can add a modifier like edge split. And this thing will correct the thing and basically will sharpen everything, you know, lower than 30 degrees. And that's exactly what you want. Or you can get rid of this option. You can, again, make sure you select this, go to this panel right here. And in here, we have normals. You can click on it and check this auto smooth. And again, it's the same concept here. And as you can see, it's fixed it. So that's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to keep it like this. So now we have our shape. Next, let's create a ball. So we have our 3D cursor in the center of our scene. If you don't, you can just press Shift C and it will place it in the center. And now we're going to bring in our object in the center of this scene. And to do that, again, you can either go to Add here or Shift A, my favorite shortcut, and then go to Mesh, and we're going to go to UV Sphere. And obviously, it's, it's a bit too big, but make sure you don't click away because we need to alter things in here. And we're going to adjust the radius here. We're going to take it down to 0.2. All right, it looks pretty small. I'm going to select this Move tool. And by the way, if you're not seeing these controls or these options, just press T on your keyboard and it'll pop up. Or you can just click on this button right here. All right, so once you are done, we're going to move it out here out of the way. You know, right click and do Shade Smooth. And yeah, it's looking good. So we have a ball. Make sure we label this ball. And we have a paddle. All right, so let's create some materials. And I'm going to split the screen into two. And for this one, we're going to go with this image editor because we want to load up our reference image with all the colors. So I'm going to press open, navigate to it. This one right here, that image. I'm going to press open image. And by the way, if you want to download this image, it comes with the project. So you want to make sure you download the project for this tutorial. The link to it is at the bottom of this video. So now we have this image. It has all the colors we need. These four are going to be for the paddle. This color is going to be for the ball. And these two are going to be for the background that we'll use later in the tutorial. So let's work with the paddle first. So I'm going to select this paddle. We're going to go to material tab. We're going to create a new material. And this material is going to be white. And we don't want this principled. So we're going to change it to emission because emission gives us just a one solid color. And that's exactly what we want for this. So I'm going to change this color to this off white. So we do have a white material, so that's one. Let's create another one. I'm going to press on this plus sign and let's load up our white material because it gives us a good starting point. We're going to duplicate it and let's rename it to orange. And obviously we need to change the color of this orange. So now we have this orange and this material. That's good. Let's create two more for red and green. So I'm going to press on this plus sign. Let's start with this orange. Let's duplicate it and let's rename it to red. And we're going to change the color to red, this red right here. Let's do this again. Plus, let's start with the red. Let's duplicate it and let's change it to green. And let's change the color of it to green as well. 
So we have all the materials we need. Next, let's assign it to this object right here. So I'm going to select this object. And by the way, we do need to see what rendered view looks like. So you can do it a number of different ways. You can either press Z on your keyboard and go to rendered view, or you can navigate all the way to the right here and click on this icon in here. So this is what the final render looks like right now. And as you can see, it applied this very first material, this off-white. So that's what it looks like. However, we need to apply other materials to it. So I'm going to select this, press tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to press numpad 7 to go into top view. And we're going to select some of these faces. So watch what happens when I select this select box tool. And if I select some of these faces like this, notice it did select the faces that I want. However, it only selected on the visible side of things. It didn't select any of these faces or anything on the bottom, which is a bit problematic. We need to fix this. So let's press 7 to go to top view. And this time I'm going to press Z to go into wireframe view like this. So now everything we select will select through everything. It will go through the whole object. So again, make sure you select this selection tool. And we're going to select some of these faces in here. So like that is good. So we have, let's do this. That's probably one too many. That's probably good. So yeah, those are good. As you can see this time, we have everything selected, everything on the bottom as well. So that's exactly what I want. So let's go back to rendered view, press Z, rendered. And now that we have our faces selected, we want to apply this orange material to those selected faces. And to do that, just select your orange material and hit assign. And there you have it. So let's do the same thing for this. I'm going to select this face, hold down control my keyboard, and we're going to go to this side, press control and select this face. So now we have everything selected between these two faces, which is exactly what we want. And we want to apply this red material. So we're going to select it, press assign. That's good. Now we're going to go to the other side, select this face, hold down control, select this small face right here and it selected everything in between, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to select this green material and hit assign. So now our panel is textured, so that's good. I'm going to press tab to get out of the edit mode. And let's create a material for this ball. I'm going to select this ball. Let's go to material tab. And in here we're going to create a new material, but I'm going to start with one of these. I'm going to go with red and I'm going to create a duplicate. And let's rename this to something like ball. Okay, instead of red, we're going to point to this yellowish looking color. All right, so now we have all of our materials created. However, we do have a problem. And the problem is this. As you can see, our red, our orange, they don't really line up to these. They look different. These look a bit more washed out. So something isn't adding up. And that's a problem. Because this is our final render. That's what it's going to look like. However, the problem is this. And here's how you fix it. The problem is that we have different color space. So you can go over here to rendered view and all the way to color management. We want to go to view transform and in here, instead of filmic, we're going to set it to standard. And when you do that, it will automatically give you exactly what you want. So now everything looks correct and that's what we're going to go with. Now that we have our materials created and applied to our objects, the next step would be to create strokes to kind of you know, create that depth for our object because let's face it, it looks too flat. Like this handle right here doesn't really have much detail. It's kind of difficult to look at. So let's do that. And to do that, we're going to use a feature called Freestyle. But before we get to it, I want to merge this window into that one like this. So we have more space to work with. So next, I'm going to go to Render tab and we're going to go all the way down to Freestyle. And we're going to check this checkbox to activate Freestyle. And in the previous versions of Blender, we would see freestyle in the preview like this. But obviously that's not the case in 2.8. That doesn't mean that we don't have strokes around our edges here. In fact, we do. So if you render an image by pressing F12, or if you go to render and then render image, you'll see that in our render, we do have strokes. And as you can see, it does create more detail, more of that depth detail around here. So it's definitely helpful. However, I also want to create strokes for materials that will separate the materials. So how can I make that happen? So let's go back. I'm going to get rid of this window. And by the way, in freestyle, if you want to increase the thickness of your lines, you can easily do so right here, line thickness, you can increase it. I'm going to keep it at one, but you know, you can increase it to whatever. I'm going to go to layer tab and I'm going to uncollapse everything like this. And we're going to go to freestyle line set. So in here we have some options to work with. 
and we have this material boundary. If you have that one checked, watch what happens. So now I'm going to press F12, or if you go to render and then render image, you'll see that this time we have lines going through materials and our edges. So that's exactly what I want. All right, so it is time for us to take this paddle and make it bend. So I'm going to select this paddle. We're going to go to modifiers tab right here, and we're going to add a modifier called simple deform. And in here, you want to make sure you are working with bend because we want to bend it. Now, obviously, it's not working properly. As you can see, it does kind of deforms it around my origin of this object, which it's somewhat of a clue, but it's not doing exactly what I wanted to do. Now, obviously, we do have an option right here that we can create a custom origin, like an empty, and place it where we want it to place it, and it'll work fine. It's just one more step we have to do. We have to create an empty. It's going to be floating over here. So I want to see if I can avoid that. Now, in the previous version of this tutorial, we used this, but this time we're going to try to avoid creating any empties. So let's do this. We're going to tell this origin to be the origin right here. Like, in other words, to move from here to the beginning of this paddle. And to do that, I'm going to set this angle to zero so we can see the actual shape. I'm going to select this object, press tab to go into edit mode. Make sure you are in face select mode. I'm going to select this face right here. And I'm going to press shift S and I'm going to say cursor to select it. And right now, this cursor drops to the selected face and it puts it right in the center, which is exactly what I want. So now that I have my cursor located exactly where I want this origin to be, next I'm going to press tab to go into object mode and I want to make sure my object is selected. I'm going to go to object and then I'm going to say set origin, origin to 3D cursor because we do have our 3D cursor in here. So origin to 3D cursor. So again, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. When you click on it, as you can see, it goes from here to here. And let's see what happens now. Let's go back to modifiers tab. And in here, as you can see, not much has changed, but it does kind of bend around this origin. So we're somewhat there, but not quite. And what we need to do, we need to actually rotate this origin, which we can't, but here's what we can do. We can rotate this object. So I'm gonna go over here and we're going to rotate it on X about 90 degrees. We're going to say negative 90. Okay. And obviously if I go back to modifiers tab in here and not much is doing here, so it's not really working. However, if I press control A and if I apply rotation like this, notice now it's working. So now I just need to correct the rotation. I'm going to take it to 90 degrees and it's exactly where it used to be. And now if I go to modifiers tab, you can see that we can alter this angle right here and it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So it is working. All right, so let's do some animation. For that, we're going to go into animation tab. And the first thing we want to do, we want to adjust the output option. So click on this output tab. And here for X, we're going to set this at 500, Y 500 as well. And then we're going to go to frame start. We're going to set that at zero. And then frame end, we're going to set that to 40. So it's going to go from zero to 40 and frame rate we're going to go with 30 frames per seconds so these are all the settings i'm going to alter for this next i'm going to go to this window here and press three to go to side view and i'm going to press z and let's see it rendered just for fun of it i'm going to expand this area as you can see we're going to be animating from zero to 40 so that's a lot of wasteful space we're going to expand this some all right so that's good let's go to frame zero and let's select this object and I'm going to go to modifiers. We're going to be animating the bend deformer. So we're going to go to something like negative 40. Let me zoom in a bit more. And we're going to set a keyframe at frame number zero. So to do that, you can either right click and then insert a keyframe, or you can just hover over this value and then press I. And when you do that, it creates a keyframe, which is exactly what we want. Then we're going to go to frame number 10 and we're going to take it up to positive 40 like this. And then again, make sure you hover over this, press I to set a keyframe. So we have like a basic animation like this. Then we're going to go to frame 20 and we're going to create the same keys in here. So just hover over this value, press I. And then we're going to go to frame 30. Again, go over here and let's take it back down to negative 40. And hover over this value, press I to set a keyframe. And as you can see, we have animation up and then back down. So here's what I want to do next. So I'm going to select this object. I'm going to go to transform options in here, and we're going to be animating Y rotation. So this right here. 
So I'm going to set it at zero at frame 10. So it hits. And then from here, it's going to be zero. So the keyframe. And then from 10 to 20, I want it to spin like this. And so it's going to be negative 180 degrees. It's going to make a full negative 180 turn. And then let's set a keyframe. So let's see what that looks like. So it's going to hit it, then spin around, and then hit it again. And then from here, from 30 to 40, I want to do the same thing. So again, set a keyframe. And then we're going to go all the way to 40. And then we're going to type negative 360. And don't forget to set a keyframe. All right, so it's going to look something like this. Hit, spin, hit, spin. And, you know, if you press play, you can see it's going to loop like this. So obviously, you might need some minor adjustments. But overall, the foundation is exactly what I want. But next, what I want to do, I want to go into Graph Editor. So go over here, Graph Editor, right here. And obviously, we have all these curves we can adjust. Let me press space to kind of pause this. We're going to work with, let's do Deformer first. So I'm going to select this, press, well, let's do this. We're going to hide this rotation, just select this, press A to select all the points, and then period on the numpad to make it all visible in this window. So that's what we're seeing here. So at first we have a hit, but I want the hit right here to be faster. So I want to be fast and then slow down as it, you know, as it kind of goes up. So this one and that one, I want them to be smaller. In other words, I want to press S and scale it down. Now watch this. It's not doing it individually. It's doing it as a group, right? So it's scaling it based on the center of my selection. And that's not what I want to do. So to change that, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change it to individual centers. When you do that, now if I press S and if I scale it, notice this time it deals with individual centers. So I'm going to scale it down some because I want to speed it up here faster. So it's going to be faster, but then I want to slow it down in here and in here. So I'm going to select both of these and then press S and we're going to scale it some like this. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks much better. Again, you can, you know, obviously you have the time, you can play with this and get it to where you like it the best, but I'm going to keep it at that. I think this is good for me. So then I'm going to hide this one and let's see the rotation of the paddle. So again, I'm going to press A to select all of my points, press period on the numpad to make them visible in this window. And in here, let's see what we can do. I'm just going to select all of them, right? Press A. And then I'm going to press S and scale them. So I'm just going to slow them down on in and out. In other words, it's going to slowly kind of speed up and then slow down. However, in the middle right here, it'll be a lot faster. So if I preview this, let's go to the beginning, shift left arrow and then space bar. Yeah, that's looking good. So obviously you can spend more time on this. You can make it, you know, more stylistic, but I'm going to leave it at that. And next I'm going to animate this ball. So I'm going to select this ball and let's see where I want it to be hit. So right about here, I want for the ball to hit the paddle. So I'm going to select this ball, shift space bar, and let's select this move tool. And I'm going to move it down. Let's zoom in. So right about here. Okay. So at frame two, I want for the ball to touch the paddle. All right. So let's set a keyframe for that. So I'm going to go to transform properties. And for Z position, I'm going to either hover over this or click on this keyframe. And then it's going to set a keyframe there. And then I'm going to move forward. And next time it hits right about here, I want to do the same thing again, set a keyframe. And then in between here, we're going to set another keyframe, but this time I want for the ball to be way up. So like 3.5. So way up there, set a keyframe. And again, make sure you select all of this, press A to select all of it, press period on the numpad to make it visible in your view here in, in this window. And if I preview this, as you can see, it's, it's not working all that great right now, but I want to kind of loop the animation after this keyframe and before this keyframe. And to do that, I'm going to select the Z location. I'm going to click on this button right here. We're going to go to modifiers and we're going to add cycles. As you can see, it kind of duplicates everything. It tiles it, which is exactly what I want. So if I preview this, it's kind of working, but we're not quite there. So here's what I want to do. It's it's doing something really weird, doesn't it? Well, so what I want to do when it goes up, I want for the ball to hang up much longer than what it does now. So I'm going to select this point and I'm going to press S. And we're going to scale this. So it's going to really hang up there. 
even more. All right, that's good. But then I'm going to speed up right here and also shift select this one right here. So I'm going to make both of these a lot smaller. So again, make sure that you have, where is it, this one right here. Make sure it's set to individual centers. That's important. And then press S to scale it. So we're going to make it a lot smaller. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. So as you can see, it hits it, pops it up. It lives there much longer. And in fact, this animation looks good to me. So I'm going to leave it as is. We are almost done with this tutorial. We just have to do a few more things. And for that, we're going to go into main layout. And I'm going to press Z to see rendered view. And we're going to go into that camera by pressing zero on the numpad. And that's what that camera sees. Now watch what happens when I move around. As you can see, it snaps me out of that camera. And if you come from like a Cinema 4D background, it's definitely a bit annoying. I want to be able to move around like this and for my camera to move with me. Now, I know in Blender you have the fly mode and you can use your keys, but that's not something I enjoy. I don't really care for it. But we do have an option in Blender if you press zero on the numpad again to go into camera. If you go over here and click on this icon, under view, we have this right here, lock camera to view. So when you have that one checked, and if you move, you can see the camera moves with you. So that's super useful, especially if you come from Cinema 4D. So I'm going to position this probably, I want to look at it from up high like that, maybe zoom in some. And again, this thing is so subjective. You want to position it however you want to position it. So that's what I'm going to go with, something like this maybe. Let's preview this. That's not bad. That's good. Yeah. And again, you can pull out some. Now, one thing I want to point out is that once you're done with positioning your camera, you want to make sure that you uncheck this. Because if you don't, I've done this many times, you accidentally will move away thinking that it will snap out, out of your camera view. But what it does, it grabs your camera with you. And that can be annoying. So that's good. Press zero again to go into camera view, numpad zero. And it's looking great. So if I preview this, that's exactly what I want. And again, I can preview this frame by pressing F12 on my keyboard. As you can see, the strokes, everything is looking nice. That's exactly what I want. So what I want to do next, I want to change the background. So each time the ball hits the paddle, like right about here, I want for the background to change colors. To do that, we're going to go into this World tab, and we're going to play with this color right here. So at 2, we're going to change this to another color, but we need to bring our color image. So again, I'm going to split this window into two. We're going to go to Image Editor, and we're going to bring in our image again. So this one right here. So we're going to be dealing with these two colors. So let me kind of take it back some. All right, so something like this is good. So at frame zero, I want it to be purple. So right here, click and make sure we pick this purple. So frame zero, it's purple. Make sure you set a keyframe for that. So hover over this, press I, and then we're gonna go to frame two. I think that's where it hits. And then here it's gonna be this light blue color. Okay, again, make sure you set a keyframe for that. So hover over this, press I. Let's keep going. So then we're gonna go to another frame. So right here where it hits. So right at frame 22, I want it to go back to purple. So I'm gonna click here and we're gonna pick purple. All right, make sure you set a keyframe for this. So hover over this, press I, and let's see what happens. So as you can see, purple hits it, blue, then purple again, and then obviously it's gonna repeat itself. But I'm gonna go back to animation layout right here, and we have more options in here. So obviously we have something weird going on here. So I'm gonna select everything, press A, and then period on the numpad to kind of make it all visible in your window. So if I preview this, you can see it's doing a lot of fading and that's not what I wanted to do. As you can see, it kind of fades from one color to another. I want for them to be constant. And to do that, here's what you need to do. Select all your points by pressing A on your keyboard and then right click and go to interpolation mode. And we're gonna click on this constant. And when you do that, notice when I preview this, everything is working well. And the reason why, because this key right here is gonna stay the same all the way to the next key. So it's gonna stay flat all the way to the next key. And then the next key is gonna stay all the way flat to the next one. And that's what constant does. So if I preview this, it's working well. Now that we are done with everything, our next step is to render our animation. And for that, I'm gonna pause this video. We're gonna to go to output settings. And in here in the output panel, we're going to determine where we want the animation to end up. So click on this folder and navigate to your renders folder. 
I'm going to say something like renders. That's good. You want to make sure that you name your file. I'm going to name it tune style animation and then press accept. After that, you want to go and adjust your file format. I'm going to go with something like FF MPEG video. So it's going to be an actual video. Usually out of 3D, you render image sequences. Well, for this case, because it's such a small file and it doesn't take very long to render, I'm just going to go with video. So once you have everything set up here, next, just go to render and click on render animation. As you can see, you'll be done in seconds. All right, well, this is the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you found it useful. And if you have, make sure you hit like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and don't forget to check out our course on how to create a motion graphic sports bumper in Blender 2.8. The link to that is at the bottom of this video. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.